Great. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Steve Allen. I am the current chair of the Morro Bay Tourism Business Improvement uh, District Advisory Board. Today is May 28th, um, 2020. It is 9.03 a.m. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum. Um, and I apologize in advance. I'm having some technical difficulties. I can't get the agenda and see everyone at the same time. So, um, Megan or Jen, can you share the call-in number for anyone just so they have that? I think Heather will share it probably. Okay. She's the administrator, right, Heather? Did we lose contact with City Hall? Yeah. There we go. Okay, she's sharing right it? now. Thank I you. Can see it. Thank you. So to join um, for public participation, uh, the number would be 408-638-0968. Is that for a webinar, Heather, or is that for a call-in? Um, that is for our meeting today. Okay. That's for our webinar. We do Zoom webinars. Okay. So if a member of the public wants to ask a question, they would just follow these instructions here? Yes. Okay. So if anyone's calling in, um, you would uh, enter the Zoom webinar and raise your hand, and then we will call on you accordingly. So. Um, let's go ahead and open this up for public comment on anything that's on our agenda this morning. Do we have anyone, Heather? Um, I, you know what? I can't see the participants or the attendees, so I'm going to need Jesse's assistance on this one. Okay. Jesse, are there any um, public comment? We are seeing none. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, no hands are raised. Can we do a board announcement? Please. Is there a board announcement spot? Um, I just want to know, not, not for the special sorry. meeting. Not for the not special for meeting. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Can we pull up the agenda? Is that possible? I can certainly do that. Pardon me. Can you see that? Uh, Yes, we can. can you Thank you. This? Okay. Yes. Okay, so the special meeting agenda item consideration of the Morro Bay Tourism uh, TBID annual report and continuation of the assessment for fiscal year 2021. Um, so everyone was sent a copy of the proposed budget and email. Do we want to open that up for discussion? I think probably city manager will go through his staff report, Steve. Okay. Since he's perfect. got a staff report attached. Ready to go, Steve? Let's go, Scott. All right, thank you, sir, and thank you. Um, Can I stop sharing my screen? Yes, yes please. Thank you. Okay. I'll probably need to share mine at some point, so thank you. Um, appreciate uh, the board making time for, for us to have this important conversation, which is the reassessment or renewal of the TBID for fiscal year 2020-2021. Um, we, we recommend that the, the board review and recommend to the city council approval of the 
2020-2021 annual report for expenditure of funds to be derived from the annual assessment and recommend City Council continue the 3% TBID assessment into fiscal year 2020-2021. Uh, this would go to City Council in the month of June and go through the regular process uh, before proceeding forward into next year. Um, it is estimated that TBID, uh, the 3% would generate um, $550,000 in funds, which is a massive drop from previous years. Uh, and we don't need to go into great details to why, since we've talked about it numerous times and it's all we hear about out in the public is COVID-19. The impacts have been devastating to virtually every industry, but particularly this one. Um, and we felt it locally. And, and while we've had some um, some weekends where we've seen uh, upticks in visitors who, who in essence shouldn't be here, but are coming. Um, the, the rates are extremely low, the occupancy is still down, um, and the, uh, the curve back into normalcy is still a long one. And um, so that definitely colors the, the budget moving forward into next year and probably pre, uh, years in, in advance of that as well. Um, just for background, uh, the TBID was formed in 2009. I uh, don't need to go into great detail because you do have the staff report, um, but there are requirements that I'll pull up on the screen here, if you bear with me for one sec, that um, are required by the state for, for us to proceed forward with a, um, an assessment. So hopefully you all can see that. Um, there are six requirements um, that have to be outlined for, for members of the public and those impacted by the assessment district to understand um, what the boundaries are, what the improvement activities will be for, for the, the upcoming year, um, the cost to provide for those improvements and activities, the method and basis for levying the assessment, um, the amount of any surplus or deficit revenues to be carried forward and the amount of contributions made from other sources. Um, so we, you did review the budget um, at your last, I believe at your last meeting and we did make modifications based on your inputs. Um, however, since that time, there has been a very, a very big change um, that you're, you're all aware of um, that I wanna talk about a little bit here as there has been some discussion about it. Um, it is a sensitive topic since um, the individual impacted is on the call with us today and uh, it, it was not an easy decision. Um, basically, the city has been in a financial freefall since um, March and we are trying to do our best to, to stem the, the bleeding and to provide a pathway forward in, in basically every as aspect of our business, whether it's police and fire, or parks and road maintenance, or wastewater water services, um, to administration and, and in, including tourism. Um, basically every aspect of our business is affected by this significantly. Uh, we've had to make the hard decisions to um, cut pay, to freeze vacant positions that are critical to, to the services our community depends upon, to restrict travel, training, um, basically cut every single expense that we have that isn't uh, extremely essential at this time, and, and the list goes on. Um, however, that that while those those um, efforts are very helpful and, and beneficial and appreciated by by the city uh, council and management team, it's not enough. Um, we we still have a huge gap to fill, and that unfortunately led to layoffs of over eight individuals, update individuals um, uh, across basically every department and fund, including tourism. Um, it, it's very sad, it's very difficult. I, I imagine some of you have had to, had to go through this uh, recently in your own businesses and it's not, it's not easy. None of these decisions um, are made without uh, understanding that it has impact on the other end. Um, so it's very sad, you know, we, we uh, really appreciate all the great work that Jen Little has done as the tourism manager since she took this on. Uh, very creative, um, very, very good at the outreach to the, to the stakeholders, and works extremely hard to, to assist uh, the lodging industry in the city and the overall community in, in, in terms of improving our quality of life and, and business atmosphere. Um, you know, you only have to look at the attached annual report for 2019 to see that work in play. 
um, and all the great great efforts that she has made alongside TBID and our tourist uh, community. Um, it's something we're all extremely proud of. Um, however, moving into next year and understanding that our budget will nearly be halved from previous years, um, you know, we have to really scrutinize every line item. And um, from the vantage point of the city manager, it was, it was, it was hard to justify carrying almost 40% administration for, for something as important as marketing. Um, you know, that, that full-time position just it sticks out. And so, you know, very, very hard. Um, but I will say that uh, Ms. Little uh, took it very, very well and I think understands, may not necessarily agree 100%, but understands where it's coming from. Um, and we've laid out the process in terms of how the layoff works and there's a 45 day notice. And she was offered the opportunity to take admin leave for that period of time, but she chose to stick it out and work for us. And that shows, uh, demonstrates a lot about her character and who she is as a person. And we really appreciate that. So, um, but from the vantage point of, of moving forward and making sure we put position ourselves uh, in our best light possible with the most flexibility possible, knowing that we're heading into a, a brand new world that will be even more challenging than before uh, we want as much flexibility as we can have as possible. And so the savings from that position uh, will be very, very helpful in, in, uh, in being light, nimble, and uh, effective in how we market. doesn't mean it'll make it easy. Um, her, her leadership and guidance and creativity will be significantly missed. Um, so I don't want to lose sight of that. Um, but that is what went into the decision-making. And of course, um, important to note that Several other individuals um, were also issued layoffs notices uh, last or earlier this month and very hard for our organization because we are small and tight knit and know each other really well and work really well together. So moving forward um, into next fiscal year, we will have um, the savings from that position to be able to use to market um, when it's the appropriate time to do so. At this time, it's unclear when that will be. Um, we're still in, in the stage two of the resiliency plan for the governor um, and, and leisure travels further out. And um, so we, we don't want to get too far ahead of that. And it's also important to note when, when we're able to market, everybody will be able to market at literally the same time. And so there may be some benefit in, in considering, you know, when, when there's a deluge of information and marketing all at the same time, perhaps um, our efforts would be better served to, to hold for a minute or not. Um, so some discussions obviously need to take place soon with, with various stakeholders, including this board, uh, about when the appropriate time is to do that and how. Um, so that is, that's the long and short of it. The budget, total budget remains the same as what you saw uh, at the last meeting, that the main change is the reduction in the full-time uh, staffing position and the, those savings are will be held um, in the fund until such time we can mark it and be used um, to the best possible light. I um, did note in the um, staff report that um, we recommend working with um, TBID and council and stakeholders about um, you know, how, to, how to proceed forward uh, with, with this new change um, because we do have some time to think it through because we can't mark it right now. And so we should take advantage of that time um, to do some hard thinking about how best to position ourselves and move forward. So with that, um, I'm happy to kind of go into more detail about the budget, although you did have a, a pretty good look at it last time um, and, and any other questions you might have. Thank you, Thanks. Scott. And um, without saying, you know, we know that this past, these past two months have been difficult for you, for your staff, for the city, um, for the business owners, the hoteliers. Uh, it's been challenging for everybody and it, it's hard to, you know, find the right words and the right answers here. I'm just going to speculate some of these questions and save some time, but can you give a little more detail um, as to what your plan would be? You know, Jen, leaves some very um, big shoes to fill here. And you said, you know, you wanted the ability to be nimble. Um, what, can you give a little more detail what that would look like or what the plan would be? Yes. Um, I, I, I believe the best path forward is to um, is probably form a, a small group of, of, of leaders in, in this in this field and um, including folks from probably from your board and uh, maybe council and, and really drill down into um, 
how best to, to come out of this, whether that's maintaining our existing structure or, or a completely different structure or, you know, going back to, to the current staffing model or some, some hybrid of that. Um, I, I think it's important to make sure we move forward with some sense of, of consensus. Um, I think that's going to be very, very important that we're all on the same page. Um, we do still have maintained the mental marketing contract through uh, the end of next fiscal year, uh, which council uh, approved. Now, again, important to note that's been modified. So there right now aren't, mar aren't marketing. We're not paying the uh, monthly retainer fee to them. Um, but we do have them waiting in the wings. Um, so I, I would suggest that this, this committee would sort of look at how best to staff the tourism as well as some ideas about marketing and then come back to TBID um, as soon as possible, really. I mean, we do have a window, probably a couple months to, to do this right. So that that's sort of my game plan for now. And I know that there's not a lot of details there, Steve, but I'm also doing this for every single department that has, has lost staff. So we're sort of um, trying to do our best to make it up as we go, because we, we had to, we had to make these, these tough choices early on and now have to sort of figure out how, how to um, continue to provide those services moving forward, including in tourism. So why don't we open this up for questions for Scott from the board members, John? So we have, um, I, I have a question. We have, uh, I, I guess what we have then before us is a little bit, um, two parts. We're looking at um, renewing, making a recommendation to renew the TBID. Is that what you're saying? And then in your staff report, you're saying we should probably put a group together. So we're looking at also putting a, a small working group, community working group. Is that more, because there's so many stakeholders. It's not just, I mean, the hotels put a percentage of their revenue in, but they're not the only stakeholders when it comes to compressing the destination marketplace. Is that what you're trying to say to us? So yeah, a full rounded, well-rounded group. Yeah, exactly. And, and as, as uh, is noted, we do have vacation rental representation on TBID, and they are paying right. assessment. So absolutely, um, and, and and getting getting sharp minds together, I think has has benefited this community in the past, and and is something we certainly uh, should do again. Uh, obviously, I, I believe that the kind of authority overall rest resides with the, the city council, but they they are a team that um, understands the value of, of community input, especially from those who know what they're talking about. And, and I think it's the key that we, we um, uh, turn, turn, to the, turn to that industry um, and, and get some good ideas and, and move forward as quickly as we can. And yes, uh, renewing TBIT is the main action today, but I, I, I didn't want to lose sight of the fact that um, we, we have the, the TBID and we have other stakeholders that, that need to provide input for moving forward. Okay, any other questions for Scott? I have a question. Can you Nancy? hear me? Yes, go ahead. So Scott, can you talk a little bit about how um, laying off Jen, since her salary came from the, um, the TBID budget, how does that help the general fund? Yeah, um, from my vantage point, uh, you know, TOT is one of our major re uh, revenue sources, uh, over 20% of our general fund. And uh, again, we have a budget for $550,000 next year. If we made no changes to staffing, um, staffing would represent about 40% of the overall budget. Um, you know, in typical years, that's about 20%. And so just looking at the numbers uh, critically and analytically with, without the emotional side, which is real, I must, I have to put in there, but um, once you do that, um, it's, it's simply a numbers game and how much can we put into marketing. Um, and so the administration does support marketing, but that's typically not um, what they're doing. And so in this, in this situation where we're in, where we have to be, nimble and we have to be able to move quickly and we have to be able to um, put as much into marketing as we can. Um, this just gives the city and with the guidance of TBID um, more flexibility. Uh, the more money that we put into marketing, uh, the theory goes, then the more return you have on TOT, which benefits the general fund. Yeah. 
I think I'm wondering what the stipulation is. I actually would love to hear from the hoteliers about um, what the, I'm just not aware of what the stipulation is on the use of TOT and TBID dollars um, by the city. Um, It seems to me that we're, we're, if I'm, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we're talking about commingling of those and moving more of that into the general fund, or I, I, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand. I'd love to hear what the hoteliers have to say about that. Yeah, I'm not, uh, definitely not commingling. I'm just saying that TBID efforts is marketing and marketing leads to overnight stays and overnight stays leads to TOT generation. It's not commingling. It's just, it's a cycle. Um, so I'm not taking to TBID money and putting it into the general fund. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm just saying mm-hmm. there's, there's a relationship between TBID and TOT. TOT is a general fund revenue. It has no stipulation whatsoever on it this time. Mm-hmm. John? What, thank you. One of the things that we did when uh, years ago, back when the TBID was formed years ago, was we put... Um, I don't want to use the word stipulations, but I don't have a better word really. We put in guidelines. There you go. We put it, we worked with the city to put in guidelines that both the city and the hoteliers at the time uh, could agree on and that they've agreed on each year subsequently into uh, the TBID, which spells out directly what the funds can be used for. And that's actually in our staff report on page six of the staff report. Mm-hmm. things more specifically of uh, what that funding can be used for. And um, it's uh, regarding the require. it says regarding the requirements for the annual report as stated in section 36.533 of the California Streets and Highways Code. Uh, the, uh, oh, wait a minute. The improvements and activities provided for number two in fiscal year 20, 20, 2021 are, and then these have always been, um, basically the same thing. So it breaks it down further for us to make sure that the money is used to compress the destination is as a guideline. And that's, I think that's the section that you referenced, Joan, is what I'm showing on the shared screen here. Oh, thank you. I have a second screen that I'm looking at now. I see it, yeah, right. Scott, um, I've got a question. Yes, sir. How nimble is the city and how bad is the city budget? I guess we don't know the numbers there. And, you know, we're in a place, you know, my report I gave a month ago, we were predicting to be down 50% for the year. Now I'm seeing reports, maybe it's 25%. We really don't know. No one knows if there's going to be a second wave. Um, you know, we don't know if there's going to be another round of stimulus, especially for municipalities and governments, which might right. be a game changer here too. How important is it for us to make these kind of decisions now, or can we drag our feet for another 30 to 60 days and see what happens? Um, based on what the, what we already have, you know, in, in our in our hands from March data, which was was really bad, and, and the star report from April, which was really bad. Um, you know, I, I think we have enough to go on to say that it's not recovering anytime soon. Um, the stimulus discussion is, has been, they've been talking about city support since March. Um, and now we're heading into June and we still haven't seen any. So while we're still holding out hope and, and absolutely working as hard as we can with our representatives to, to help, help cities um, so that we don't have to lay off police and firefighters and, and other positions like that. Um, you know, that's, that's what we're going to continue to do. Um, but at this time with the information we have, um, you know, we're projecting about a three and a half million dollar deficit, um, for our general fund next year. Um, you know, so that's in the kind of up to the 30% range for our our budget. Um, you know, and I, we're going to come back to council probably on a monthly, if not, you know, quarterly basis to, um, as we learn more information and, and go from there, but <clears throat> based on the recent hotel and vacation rental and RV order placed on uh, our industry by the county, <clears throat> that you can't have more than 50% occupancy. And I see no 
no movement and that, and that being relieved, um, that gives you an idea of what your cap is. <clears throat> We know the rates have been down even with those caps in place in terms of uh, right, um, what what charges are being uh, made. So um, the information still points to a pretty gloomy picture for, for next year. Um, but we do plan to revise as we learn more um, and, and if we get outside assistance and things like that. But what we have now shows a, a gloomy picture, and um, that's why we had to make those decisions we, we've made. Um, certainly those can be undone that, you know, if, if, if we find out in three months that in reality, it wasn't as bad as we thought, um, may, may co kind of coincide with the work that's being done, uh, with the, with the committee looking at how, how to market our best position ourselves moving forward. So I, I think there's some flexibility there, but ultimately I don't think the picture is going to change much, even with, you know, having a busy, uh, Memorial Day weekend, um, that we saw last weekend. We could yeah. conceivably leave the line item in for Jen's position for Jen. And then if things do improve, we could possibly backtrack or. I mean, that's, that, we have there? I, I think that's where, you, you know, your input from this, this board is helpful. Um, again, that's you, you, in some, some ways you do sort of have to, make some decisions soon about marketing and, and how you're going to use that. And, and those decisions have would have implications on retaining, retaining budget for that position. So that's, that's something to, to keep in mind. And, um, you know, if, if, if we find within a year, we still, we, we, we want to refill the tourism manager position, um, based on city personnel, you know, rules, we would, we would bring Jen back for that. Mm -hmm. Um, but at this time, you know, the numbers are what they are and, um, yeah, so it's certainly curious to hear what the, the board thinks about that. Yeah. Nancy? Um, so, I um, mean, yeah, I've been involved with a lot of, you know, corporate eBay, Apple, you know, a lot of marketing efforts. And in times of crisis, um, I've sat on the leadership team of those companies. And, and during a time of, of crisis, um, the agency is not helpful because the agency are worker bees. They just do what they were told to do per a, a, their last strategy. What's critical during a time like this is thought leadership and conceptual development and the ability to move really quickly because of their experience. And I believe, Joan, you were on the hiring committee for Jen's position. And I think that you probably experienced how difficult it is to find um, really uniquely qualified people in this area, because um, there's a big difference between messaging and marketing. And we're going into a time of messaging. Me and um, messaging is so critical to our residents in building trust and a foundation of trust that we're keeping them safe, as well as Mark as messaging to the world that we're unique and we're safe and so this is a time where you do not want to cut off the, the strategic conceptual work that is so much more critical to our success um, uh, it, it, during the next two years than the worker bees. Um, so I want to make that distinction because it's very easy to put marketing into a single bucket and just think of it as one thing. It's not. And it's very critical to have the right skills in place during this time. Um, and Jen is uniquely, uh, sorry, Jen, you're gonna blush here, but she's really uniquely qualified as a, as a conceptual thinker who can really move with gorilla quickness to pilot different things, to try different things, to do it cheaply, and to really unify the group that you're talking about putting together. If you put a pe group of people together from all areas of Morro Bay, without somebody with this experience, you're going to have chaos. You're going to have people saying things like, just put flames on the Morro Bay logo on the website, right? That's what an un- trained person will say to somebody about like, just give the website some sizzle or something incredibly unhelpful. So you have to have somebody who under, understands these are like the typical bonehead things that people who don't understand messaging and marketing will say. And, um, and they you need to be able to understand that and move I, the really effective ideas forward quickly because of experience. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. 
Is it, is it, am I understanding what your idea of this, of the working, I, I need to better understand what your idea, I think, of the working group is. You're not necessarily saying that the working group is doing the marketing. What you're saying is they put a plan together to move forward with a future structure for our community that can compress the destination. So they're not, are, are, and I have, and to your point, Nancy, yes, I was on the, the interview committee for director of tourism, not just once, not twice, but three times in our community. So hello, I've seen uh, multiple RFPs roll through for marketing firms and all kinds of stuff over the years I've been involved. And I've been super fortunate to be involved with that because I've been blessed to learn something by that experience each time. But having said that, I'm, I, I don't think that we have enough funding right now um, in, in terms of what Scott is saying. And I am really concerned. Scott, you mentioned that we were, did you say two and a half to $3 million behind in general fund funding, but our special funds, which is our Harbor district and this fund and then our water and sewer funds will also likely take a hit too. So this is greater than just that general fund. And while the, while the revenue from the hotels doesn't throw money off, it, the TBID fund doesn't just create revenue for the TBID fund alone. The TBID fund compresses and creates revenue for the Harbor fund by throwing people onto the Embarcadero. And, you know, I, I hear, what Scott is saying in terms of we have a terrific staff person here who has worked hard for our community, not only the hoteliers, but the entire destination, but we're in a struggling position. And I, I'm wondering how fast the hotel economy is going and the, I shouldn't say hotel, the lodging economy, because the vacation rentals are a huge part of that, Terry. The va vacation rentals are now, uh, really have over the last five years had an uptick and upswell. So I don't, from what I'm reading on predictions of a boomerang in this, we are at least 20 months out. And so if suddenly a boomerang happens at Labor Day or at Thanksgiving, I think we are in a unique position where as a board and as a city council, and I think the administration would allow us the leeway to quickly reverse any staffing decision that we, we may have made during the, the downturn and be able to be there. But I don't see any harm in having a working group study this alongside with that. Mm -hmm. The working group can always be disbanded. Who cares, right? Mm -hmm. We can thank everyone for their time and give them all a candy cane and off they go. But we, we then have two plans and maybe the working group comes up with a plan B and this, what our current position of what we have is always kind of our, our plan A and we see what's out there plan B was. I don't see any harm in that. Yeah. Okay. And to be clear that I, I wouldn't bring in a, a group to advise on marketing strategy or overall strategy. We, we have a strategic plan and we, right. We have also given good, pretty good direction to middle marketing. So this is more about proceeding forward and how we staff and organize. So that, that that's not, I'm not asking people to tell us how to market, um, you know, and, I, and I've led these, these efforts before, not to say marketing, but community groups, that's sort of what I specialize in. So I, I think I'm positioned well to, to sort of weed out the good ideas from, from those that maybe need more development and, and see what we can come come back with to our to our council and to TBID. So I, I feel I feel I'm particularly positioned to do that and do that well. Terry, you had a comment? Um, I did. I was just wondering if we're taking into consideration like Airbnb and VRBO um, market analysis is that the beach communities, the drivable beach communities, particularly the small town beach communities where people can spread out are gonna boomerang the fastest, which we absolutely fit into that group. Um, people are looking for places to get out of the city, spread out and be able to drive there because who knows what air flights will be doing. So I um, don't pretend to know exactly this industry. I'm 
completely a novice, but I'm just wondering if those kind of ideas are also being considered. Um, I would just say as far as Jen goes, my hesitation um, would be in getting rid of the professional who knows best where to spend the dollars and having marketing dollars not spent as strategically as possible with her not being here. Um, I feel like you don't want to cut off your nose to spite your face. And I feel like she's the best person that knows where the strengths are going to be, where those dollars should be going. That would, that was my comment. Thank you. Amish, um, let's hear from you as a hotelier. What is, what are your thoughts on this? You're still muted. There you go. You're still muted. Sorry, I'm having a little t technical difficulties no right now. Um, I think right now, uh, just with every industry, um, there is a lot of uh, cutbacks, not only in the hotels, but in the, the city government as well. Um, and we're doing our part to kind of see how we're going to go through this over the next few months, uh, if not the next few years. Um, I know personally we've uh, had a lot of changes in operations and how we do uh, business at our facility um, because we are looking at the long term and we don't want to be left, uh, you know, with our hands in our pockets because we didn't implement any changes um, and. I do believe uh, Jen's experience is very valuable, valuable. Um, however, I also feel uh, at this time it's very, we need to be very fluid about the situation. Um, I think a uh, committee would be actually very well um, in this situation um, just to kind of get some ideas flowing. And I think if the economy does change, um, I do not see any reason why we cannot bring back uh, Jennifer um, to kind of push us through uh, reopening. Um, but I think just right now we need to be very cautious about how we use our funds because uh, we don't know when the economy will rebound and how the hotel market and t uh, uh, vacation rental market is going to be in the for, uh, coming months, especially with talks of second waves and how people travel uh, moving forward. I know there have been studies saying that uh, as soon as the economy opens, people are going to be more likely to travel, but then uh, how long will that last, especially with the unemployment rates going the way they are? And um, Yeah, I guess it's, I'm, I'm very weary. Um, I'd like to see uh, kind of a halt um, and more focus on how we're going to reopen uh, when we do. I think there needs to be a plan on that. Um, and I think a committee to kind of direct and plan that would be a good idea uh, at this time. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any other Comments, questions for Scott? So I'm wondering what our next steps are. So I guess that question is for Scott. Are you looking for today then a couple of motions from us? One to approve the, the plan that you set forth. And so a, a recommendation to city council to uh, approve the annual uh, TBID assessment, right? So we need a motion to approve the annual TBID assessment and the assessment plan or report. Uh, is that a second motion? So one to approve the assessment district, recommend that it move forward, and another one to recommend that they approve the report. And then a third motion would be, uh, and obviously these would all be up for discussion by the board, a uh, recommendation that the city council form a working group or have the city manager form a working group. So are those the three motions? 
I think you can do one, you can do one motion for um, the uh, annual report and assessment at three percent, if you like, and then if if the the board is so inclined that they want to provide some some thought on a recommendation on a uh, a group, uh, that's fine. I mean, I can do it on my own authority, or I can you know work with city council to do that. But um, if 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 the TBID would would prefer to, to do something formal that that also could be beneficial in shaping some of the thoughts moving forward. Okay. Um, then I think, well, I, I don't know if Stephen's ready for motions. Let me ask him. No, please. Okay, then I move that uh, the TBID advisory board recommend to the city council that they adopt the annual report and the TBID assessment at 3%. for the fiscal year 2020-2021. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, I'll miss seconds. Um, is there further discussion or public comment? Okay, seeing none, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Okay, um, so it appears motion passes. Um, Scott, going back to the budget, I guess. So we have one opposed? Yeah. Okay, thank yes. you. Um, being an eternal optimist here, I just, I Did really think. Two opposed, Terry. Two opposed. Two opposed. Two opposed. Okay, so Nancy and Terry opposed. I Sorry, I can only see so much on my screen. I can't either. <laughs> Steve, I'll, Joan, and I'll stop Amish. the share. There you go, sorry. Yeah. Steve, Joan, and Amish. Approved it. Okay, so is three enough to? Is that okay? It's just a recommendation that uh, okay. council council is the one who sets the the assessment, but it's you know it's a majority. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Scott, going back to the question of the budget here, personally, I think there is a strong um, likelihood that the city is gonna get some type of stimulus eventually, hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days. Um, Chris Kosteka did send in his comments. He is very much um, of the opinion that the economy is gonna rebound as well. Can we leave the line item in for Jen's position to see what happens? Um, I mean, that's if that's what the, the board would like to recommend, we certainly can do that. Um, you know, the, the layoff has been issued and that's going forward. Um, so if the board and, and or a subgroup uh, of folks say, you know, we, we shouldn't spend that money and we just hold it to, for as long as we can, that, that could be a recommendation uh, of that group. Or if that's what TBID would like to do now, um, they certainly could do that. Okay, we had a couple yeah. questions. Terry, you had something? Is it possible to just extend it for 90 days? Like just put it on pause a little bit? Put, put what on pause? Put, instead of approving an entire year of salary, only put in for the next 90 days, you know, 120 days, whatever, um, just to kind of get us through summer and see what happens. Right, I, I get, so here, here's here's my consternation. Um, we can't market right now at all, and we're paying staff who can't market. And you know, so there, there's a there's a concern on my part just from that standpoint that um, the funds are pretty specific, their uses are pretty specified, and we're unable to do that. So I, I have a hard time justifying keeping the position on when we can't do what the position is intended to do. So there, there's that element as well as just creating as much flexibility as we can for for marketing when we're allowed to do so. So that is another element of that. So you know, I, I I'm not moving backwards on, on the decision to, to, to do the layoff, but certainly the board can provide recommendations as far as what do you do with that 
uh, projected uh, uh, revenue and and where where do you want to see those funds used for? And if it if it's well, we don't want to make a decision on restructuring or organization, and we'd rather just keep the same model and hold out for as long as we can. We, that can be a recommendation, or there could be a different route to go. And I think that's why it's important we have uh, voices from TBIT as well as um, our regular folks in the industry to provide um, provide some recommendation on that on those particular issues. Okay, we have Joan and then Nancy. Joan, you had the question. Joan, you're on mute. mute. Sorry, um, I have a couple of questions. I'm wondering, um, does, so let me ask you, I guess, does city council approve the layoffs? Have they approved these the layoffs already? Because it doesn't matter what our recommendation is if they've already approved everything. Uh, the layoff has been approved by me. The decision is mine. Um, okay. You know, we did did uh, consult with council, but that personnel decision is the city managers and followed the city policy um, to a T in, in, in terms of how that was done and, and went beyond that in terms of offering other things that aren't required uh, to assist Jen. And so um, we, we've done that. Um, same with the other uh, seven employees who received similar notices a couple weeks ago. Um, and so we're, we're treating them all equally in, in terms of that and not, um, you know, in, in just going forward with the, the noticing requirements and process. And then my follow-up question to that is, and I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, Megan, I'm going to bring your name up. I don't know anything about Megan. Are we still going to have, are we going to have continuity in our office or a point of contact for tourism marketing with uh, our established partners like Visit SlowCal? And how is all that, is that, uh, is, is Megan the, the point of, at least do we have a point of contact is what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, we, Megan, Megan it, it is budgeted, uh, at least a part-time position is budgeted to do uh, the administration of, of things that um, continue forward, even with some of the, with the, the marketing being put on hold. Um, you know, I'm in regular contact with Chuck Davidson at, at SlowCal. Um, he's aware of, of the, the direction and um, getting good advice from him and would probably consider him a, a good person to uh, have on the, this, this uh, committee, community. Uh -huh. Okay, those Nancy, are my two questions for now. Nancy, you got a comment? So just a, a comment, Scott, on, on what you, how you are thinking of marketing is, is the right way to think about marketing when you're in steady state implementation. But the period of the next um, 60 days is when you market your brand. That is the difference between strategic marketing and implementation marketing. And quite, quite, um, uh, respectfully, I think the way that you just expressed that this is a time when you can't market shows a really deep lack of understanding about what marketing is. So especially during a time of crisis like this, this is the time when you do what's called consideration marketing. You start to put into people's heads that, oh, I can drive tomorrow bay. Right. That's and that leverage is what Terry is talking about. So this is the time to market, not the time not to market. And it's the time to put out strategic messaging, stories about Morro Bay, the kinds of things that Jen brings. The next 60 days are critical. If there is going to be a swell of San Franciscans and people from LA looking for a place that they can use the cars, they're prophylactic to get someplace safe. This is the time to do it. This week and the next 60 days are the critical time to market. Thank you. And, and uh, you know, uh, I'm not a marketer, so I, I don't pretend to be. I'm a city manager. I came up through, <laughs> through budget. And a very good one. And a very public, good one. In public I, safety. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think one of the first people I met here was Joan. And I said, I don't know anything about marketing. Tell me all I need to know. Um, you know, so I'm a novice and I, I don't pretend to have the, the skill set. I, and I appreciate what you're saying. And, 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 and that was sort of where Jen and I were going with this. And, and also with folks like Erica and other staff members, you know, when, when we went into lockdown and then it became pretty obvious, you know, when you read the shelter at home order, or what it, you just, you just don't want to run afoul that you don't want to raise your hand and say, please, Governor Newsom, do not give us funds when those become available because we're thumbing our nose at you. 
and asking people to come here. So we're we're in that weird place where we any any hint that we're marketing and saying we're open, it, it's uh, yeah. So I I totally hear what you're saying, Nancy, I, and I I don't want to dismiss it. It's just we're, we're stuck. Right? I I had a party last week where yeah. we sat outside of my house with just a small group of people and watched the videos of where we want to go the moment we can go someplace. Right. We want to be in those discussions right now, Scott. And you are an excellent city manager. I am so happy you're here, and I'm so grateful to you for taking on such a difficult time. I don't know what we would do without you, but you are a marketer. Uh, uh, <laughs> I know <laughs> you're not a marketer. <laughs> so I really want you to, you know, to understand that and understand that the unique and a gen. Uh, thank you so much for the last for putting your 45 days and helping your city because we really you are so incredibly talented and um, and you know I, I recognize that the moment I joined this TBIT board so we, we, we need her strategic help right now to build our brand and to build what's called the consideration phase so that the moment people can travel they're booking Airbnb. You know, they see it as a safe place to come. I mean, I think our vacation rentals and, and our citizens here who own houses here that they rent as Airbnb need us to be um, filling those those vacation rentals. And I think J Jen is uniquely qualified um, to help us, and we have to leverage her. Thank you, Jen. I'll shut up. Oh, one, one last thing. <laughs> there is a designation that I just want to put in the back of your head, Scott, between your employees who are cost centers and your employees that are profit centers. This is the way I think as a business person. There are, the last thing that a, a, like a company wants to do is lay off their sales force during a time of crisis because they're the generators of revenue, right? Jen is one of your profit center employees, there are other employees that's terrible that we have to let them go, but they never generate any revenue. They maintain, they operate, they're cost centers, right? Jen is our profit center. Letting go of somebody that generates profit is killing us. It will kill us because we won't have any way to get off to, to effectively and efficiently and quickly bring that revenue in. So that's why you just want to put those two considerations in your head from a business perspective. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. That's really helpful and, and, and a really good point. And we definitely looked at that with in the positions and, you know, we have other sim somewhat related uh, considerations in other parts of the organization, like recreation, for instance, where, you know, there's, it's a revenue, typically a revenue or offsetting uh, situation because of fees. And a similar similar phenomena there, where we can't, we simply can't do recreation, right? Like I can't market right now. I can't say, please, Valley, come to come to Tomorrow Bay, or let's go to LA, let's get that market here. I also can't have people doing ath, ath, um, youth sport leagues or adult sport leagues. Like that's il that's illegal right now. And so, yeah. if employees are responsible for that, who generate the revenue that pay for their positions. I can't justify them being here because they can't do what they're hired to do. And that's where I find myself in a similar position to you. And I, and I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's a tough one, but your, your points are well taken and I, I appreciate it. Well, is there any, I mean, and I'm sorry to talk, talk about this in such an open forum, but have there been any discussions about furloughing for a particular period of time or a reduction in salary or um, other discussions that are in between layoff and hot and full time? Yeah. I mean, I, I think those discussions might be very, you know, a furlough period mm -hmm. so that we, can and then be ready the, the moment that we can start to do. I mean, I, as I said, consideration marketing could happen right now in very creative ways, but I understand what, what you're saying, but I'd love to see that there were other options. Explored. Yeah. Yeah. We def definitely, I mean, we did pay cuts. We looked at furloughs. We, we, we obviously have to go through negotiations with the unions and we're trying to create a sort of uniformity in how we're applying those things. Cause that's, that's a value of our organization. Um, so those were definitely considered, but ultimately did not move forward with. Um, and, and again, important to note in our, our city policies, if, you know, if we find in six months that a position is, is warranted and we, we, or a couple months, whatever the case may be, I mean, we're, 
she still has first right of refusal of that position, or that's probably not the right terms. My HR director is probably hitting over the head, but you know something along those lines where you know Jen could be brought back. Um, so yeah, we did definitely did look at that. I'm going to come out and say it as a hotelier who you know represents businesses that are paying the majority of the TBID funding. You know if we are not advertising and if the county is restricting occupancy at 50 percent why the heck are we paying into this thing right now um mm -hmm. you know i know the answers to that but it's really frustrating you know we've got these these businesses that are hemorrhaging cash um you know let alone we pay double for water and everything else um so if we are paying into this thing you know we would like to see something come out of it something worthwhile and I, I appreciate where scott is you know i'm speaking personally here i know he's between a rock and a hard place and there's really not a good answer but you know what i'm what i'm getting from the group here is that there's some way we can leave the line item in there or you know look at this again in 90 days um you know just some kind of stop gap so if and when things do improve we can make an offer to jen and possibly try and bring her back is that fair yeah, like I said, there's nothing nothing that's being done today prohibits us from bringing her back. Now, if you want to take the extra step of saying, you know, we, we are we are we're making the decision not to use any of those funds for anything until a certain period of time. Again, that that could be a recommendation. That that will just be a recommendation. Not you know, obviously not the action we'll take. That's that would be up to city council. So that again is something that could be stated and. Important to note, you know, we if we're not spending the TBID funds, they're they're going to be held to, held in the account and can be utilized. So I, I understand what you're saying, Steve. But we, and that was sort of what was what was hard for me in this position is that you know we we are collecting revenues, and then we have staff who we, who can't do their jobs because of the state order. So that that was another level of consideration. But moving forward, once um, once we're we don't have that position, then the money is, is being held to be used for, for directly for this purpose once we're allowed to. And again, up to a year, we can bring her back um, or beyond that too. Um, but you know, by, by city policy, she could be brought back within a year. If, if the TBID decides and council decides that um, a full-time position within the city purview is the right organization and structure to do so, then that, that would be what we would do. So again, if you want to make that formal recommendation to say, let's not spend any of that money for three months, uh, you know, that's, that's totally um, within your purview to make that recommendation. I would support that. Joan, you had a comment? Yeah, before we make a recommendation like that, I see that Jen Calloway, I think that's the other Jen that's on here, Jen Calloway, is that right? Yes, Hi, I'm, Jen. I'm on standby. <laughs> I have a question for the finance director. I'm concerned about, um, tying a portion of money and keeping it in a line item that if we go through a process, the city council may not recommend us using it on that line item. And then we haven't used it in terms of getting marketing going, getting a push like Nancy has suggested right now, going for when we reopen. So I'm wondering what we have in the reserves and where the reserves are in terms of being spent down here. And it's my understanding that, you know, our, our revenues fell off starting in February because of COVID people started to cancel reservations and not travel. And then we had the whole travel ban start. Hotels were shut down. I mean, they literally went some of them from 80% year round occupancy to having one room in 10 days. Um, which is a big deal. That's a big deal for our economy. So I guess what I'm getting to is, were some of those reserves used to backfill that gap in what we would have collected this year that we're in right now, our fiscal year that we're in right now, and used to, to pay for all the things that were in our current budget? Or do we still have those where we can fall back on those? Where are we with that, um, with that reserve account? Yeah, so we... Um we kind of go back and true up the funds at the end of the year when we close the book. So, um, you know, right now we haven't taken anything out of your accumulation fund and put it in the operation fund um, to make you whole. Um, so we'll see when we close June 30th. Um, you know, we, we actually close August 30th because we have 60 days to accrue anything back. 
um, we'll see where you end up in the year. And if we have to use accumulation funds to make up for those shortfalls, but we, we did experience significantly lower revenues in February uh, or March and April. Um, expect to have lower revenues in May, um, partially because I think the rates in many of the hotels have been reduced in some cases by half. So um, we'll monitor the budget very closely. And, and when we go close those books, we'll see how much needs to come out of accumulation. And then we'll bring back um, a report to you to this committee to let you know because we'll do we'll have to do a budget adjustment for that. Um, you have in the accumulation fund um, about two hundred of about well with with keeping um, the two hundred position vacant. Um, next year, not funded for the year, you would have $165,000 in revenues over expenditures that at some point you could utilize if the economy is turning around to, as Scott mentions, either bring back the position internally um, or do something else with. So that money will just sit there. It's not being programmed. And then in the accumulation fund, you have another hundred and just shy of $160,000 in there. So we have a way, a path forward, even if this, even if it's not the position or whatever we cut from the budget currently is not a line item right now, or not necessarily we, but whatever the city or the city council cuts from the budget, we we may have a future path forward depending on how we come out with our reserve account, correct? And with what, with what our projected possible balances are. Correct. I'm I'm hoping that all of my numbers are completely wrong and I'm being way too pessimistic on um, on what the situation is. I'm also very concerned and leery about we might see a better summer than it we're expecting, but if there's a resurgence in the fall and winter, um, having enough balance in, in everybody's accumulation funds, your your accumulation fund, general fund emergency reserves, water, sewer, as you mentioned, they're all impacted and making sure we have enough. Um, fund balance and all of those accumulation funds to to flow us over another resurgence if that happens. Okay, so you have helped me, I think, greatly by getting some of those questions answered because I was wondering if the ninety five thousand or whatever the budget number is, and I don't have the I don't have that up on my screen. Sorry, whatever the budget number is. Um, I don't think that, in other words, what, I, what I'm what i thinking in my mind is we will have the, we'll have the opportunity if, if the city moves through with the process to have a group study what the best path forward is for tourism management in our community, if they decide to do that, we still have a path forward to fund what we're doing now our current structure if we decide to turn back around and, and boomerang back to that. Is that, Absolutely. Is, that fair, is that a fair statement? Yes, it is. Okay, that's what I want to know. I need to have a clear head on that. Thank you. So, Scott, would, if we have a recommendation for the budget, is that a motion at this point or what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, if you want to specify, um, you know, anything on the uh, group and or, um, you know, something along the, the lines of um, holding holding that line item, or freezing that line item, um, you know, you, you can do that. Um, so that's, you know, but ultimately, yeah, it will just be a recommendation to council and, the, and then they would take that up as under consideration for their budget um, for next year. Okay. Does anyone care to make a motion? Not all at once here, people. <laughs> okay. I, can you share the budget on screen for us, somebody? Let's have a look at what we're motioning on and approving. Oh. I'm so sorry. 
I think it helps to be visual, yeah? Yeah. My other computer battery died. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get it back up. And Jonah, I don't think we're approving anything. This is just a recommendation to council at this point. So the budget, okay, the budget is on page, here it is, I found it. Uh, my computer came back up. I had it open, but. Yeah, uh, I'm sharing it. I'm there sharing it now. Um, so as of, as of now, um, let's see, make sure I get the, the column correct here. So the far right column is the, Jen, Jen Cowie, is that the right, am I looking at the right one? 2021 level one, that's the, that's what's being projected for next budget year. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, go down a little farther south. There you go. Yeah. So, right yeah, so the, the, the items that relate to um, the, the full-time position are in this, um, this kind of, at this point, the top, the top of the screen. And so that's where you see the, the regular pay zeroed out, um, uh, part time significantly reduced, and then you know all the all the other uh, the employee benefits, PERS contributions, um, et cetera, are, are also zeroed out. So you know what last year would have been two hundred uh, two hundred twenty thousand dollars is now twenty five thousand. I don't know. Am I? Yeah. Am I muted? You're not. Okay, I I feel like Scott is in between a rock and a hard place here. None of these decisions are ever, ever easy. As a former HR director, I can't tell you how many times I went home sick to my stomach over stuff like this, not only from the aspect of, you know, friends and colleagues that I worked with sometimes for years, there's a human aspect to this and it's just gut wrenching, you know, to go through this and it's gut wrenching to, to be fiscally, literally fiscally exposed like this as a community. Um, I, I have to be honest, I'm pretty fine with the budget as it stands because I think that we need to support Scott in this time of trouble and get him to a position where he can move through things. And I have a feeling that, you know, we may snap right back around to where we are right now as a, a community once we review how we'd like to move forward. But I, I understand because of my former life, exactly kind of the position that our leadership, our city leadership is in, and I'd like to give them as much flexibility as possible to move forward for our community with the plan for recovery. So I'm, I'm okay with this. I just want to put that out there. As and I don't, as know, as yeah. is, Joan, I don't think anyone's questioning this decision making. I don't think he has a choice at this point. I think I agree. the discussion is let's be flexible if we do bounce back so we don't shoot ourselves in the foot and not be in the position to market more obey. You know, again, I'll repeat, you know, what I said in one of the previous meetings back in 2002 with COVID-1, we actually got busier at our Morro Bay hotels because more people were traveling up and down the coast and they weren't going anywhere else. So, you know, personally, I totally agree. Scott doesn't have a choice, but let's let's allow some flexibility so we can't bounce back if the city gets funding within 90 days, say by September 1, let's be in a position um, to generate some more business. And I think that's what Jennifer Calloway said, that, that we will be in that position. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I understood that wrong. We will, based on our reserves, be in that position. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Maybe I missed no, that's correct. You, you, you'll have the money. We're not reallocating um, Jen's salary to anything else. It's, it's basically wipes out into the savings account, and then you can come back and reappropriate it to, to salaries or, or some other form of, you know, whatever you choose to do. But the money is still going to be there. Either one way or the other. Right. Okay. Yeah. Terry, do you have a comment? 
No. Um, I was actually, um, I'm good. I understand that we have the reserves. That's great. And I don't mean to demean your position, Scott. I know how difficult it is as a business owner to make these decisions. It's heart wrenching. Um, I'm just trying to, as an employer, you know, we always want to keep our key employees. I know you know that again, like what Nancy was saying, you are, um, keep, you know, employees that are making a profit, um, bringing income in. And I, I trust your decision-making. I'm a novice at this definitely. Um, so I don't mean like I said to demean your authority by any means. Yeah, I haven't done that at all. Uh, I, I, this is just a hard discussion and, and, and very hard. I know with, with, with Jen sitting on the line. And so again, I, I, you know, I want to extend my, my gratitude to her for, for being such a professional through all of this. I second that. <laughs> I second all of it. Thank you, Scott and, and Jen. Can we make and a Megan, about and that? Megan too. <laughs> and Heather. Yeah. Way to hang in there. I mean, it is really, it, it's, you know, can we make a motion about how happy we are that Jennifer has hung in there for, you know, this time to support our community, our community, you know, we're devastated by all kinds of losses. And this is just a, another one to, you know, chalk up, here we go. And, you know, Jennifer, thank you. I sent you an email this morning asking you a question. There you are, you know, you're still there for us and it's so appreciated. Completely agree. Okay, so one last time, does anyone want to make a motion for a recommendation or are we fine with the budget as it's been proposed? All right, well, seeing none, um, was there anything else on the agenda today? No, thank you. Uh, again, thanks for, uh, I know we were going to have this uh, last week and a lot of changes occurred, obviously, so I appreciate your flexibility. And, um, you know, we'll be going to council next Wednesday for a special budget meeting. Um, they will adopt the budget, I believe, on the 23rd of June, right? Correct, Jen Calloway? I think so. Um, so we um, will be moving quickly through that and um, yeah. Yeah, I will. I will be recommending it, whether I do it through council or on my own, just to put together a working group. And I definitely want to pull members from from TBID. Uh, only I can only take so many before we run into Brown Act violate, uh, concerns. But um, you know, the, the, the input you provided today has been invaluable. So thank you. Okay, great. John, you had a comment. Do you need a motion for our support on your working group, or that's unnecessary? It, it, only if you want to. I, like I said, I think I think that's something I would recommend to council on my own. But um, if, if the group is so inclined, they certainly could do that. But I, I, I think I could I could carry it forward saying that there's consensus that uh, some sort of stakeholder group would be would be helpful. Um, and and with Nancy's comments, very much on top of mind of like this is not this is not where you go to tell us how to market. It's it's more the strategic. Um, and, and, and structural things that we need to discuss. Okay, great. Um, Jen Little, did you have any comments at all? Nope, I don't. I'm, I'm around. I don't know. If, do we need to open it to public comment before we close? I think Steve opened it to everybody at the beginning of okay. the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Amish, I'd love to hear your comments before we leave. Um, I just had a quick question. Uh, speaking of stakeholders, um, the annual report, um, how is that going to get out to the hoteliers? And uh, I don't know if VRs would be included for this one since they were just approved um, about the data that was submitted in the packet. Yeah, we, we uh, put it on the, the, the tourism website and um, and probably email it out, Jen, if we haven't already to the to, to everybody. Is that right? Usually sure. we'll I mean, I know we we typically had the annual stakeholder meeting, but that was scheduled for March, and we all we all knew what happened in April, and we all knew what happened there. So, um, sure get emailed out. Yeah, no hard copies this year, just email. That's probably best. Um, and then, just as a business owner, um, we plan for the worst and hope for the best, um, and and hoping I hope that. Uh, we do recover quickly, and um, I guess we are uh, 
hopefully we can bring back Jennifer uh, be, uh, should the economy reopen because we will need a strong leadership uh, to help uh, guide us with a reopening strategy. Um, but in the interim, um, I think Scott's uh, focus group could help uh, kind of create, um, I guess, direction until then um, and just kind of take everything cautiously at this time. Um, like I said, uh, just plan for the worst and hope for the best. Great, thank you, Ramesh. Scott, do we have uh, a, a meeting schedule? Is it, are we gonna keep the same meeting format and just go to Zoom here for the remainder of the year? Um, remainder of the year unknown. Uh, good question, Steve. I, 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 we would hope to maintain our regular schedule. Um, we are scheduled to meet in June, correct, Jennifer? And then it's July is off. I know, I know we have, yeah, we, we modified the schedule a bit last year, but I would anticipate we'll be in Zoom mode for maybe a couple more months and then take it from there, depending on where the governor has, has moved the state and the, the resiliency plan reopening. Okay, do we know the date in June? It's the, the third week? Thursday, just like normal. It like normal. is correct, and that's the 18th of June. Okay. Yeah. Perfect, we'll plan for that. Uh, any other last comments before we close? Well, thank you, everyone. Um, Jennifer Little, thank you for everything. Um, thank you for hanging in there. You've been great. You know, we're all in this together, and we hope that we're going to rebound and bring you back here soon. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Steve. It's tough. All yeah. right. So I'm going to adjourn the meeting 1020. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your thoughts. Everybody stay well. Thank you, Scott. Stay safe. Bye -bye. Thank you. Be well.